In many cases, especially when dealing with more complex designs, it might be useful to use some hand sketches or some images that we can simply just trace over to generate our 3D models. So for example, this hammer design here. Let's say I wanted to create this head of my hammer. It's a fairly complex shape as I can see. So what I've done here, I've actually found some hand sketches of this particular shape. And I'm going to use these to help me design in Shaper 3D. So how this in particular was designed was by using these two imported sketches here. This can really be any image file. So let's take a look at creating this design. So what I'm going to want to first do is import my sketches or import my image files. And what I like to do here is first jump to the view that I'd like to import. So say I want to throw in my front view first. So I'm going to jump into my view cube here and jump to front. And that's just going to help me as it's now going to import that image into my front view so I won't have to reorient it as much. Now I can just go into add and I can go to image. And here I can use any existing image I might have uh, within my photos. I can take a snapshot with my camera, or I can go into existing files. In this case, I already have a few drawn up. So here I'm going to use my claw hammer front view. And notice that throws my image nicely into my front view here. Of course, I can make some changes here. Maybe first I want to resize my image. I'll say my total image is maybe 12 inches there. And then what I like to do is also maybe move the pivot point here slightly to any point that may, might make sense to you. I'm going to throw it in kind of an origin point there. And I like to align that with my origin now as well. So I'm going to translate this a little bit over here. Notice this is just the same, uh, very similar to my translation tools. i throw somewhere about here. And I just like to put my pivot point or a good starting point on my origin so that I can use that as a reference later on if needed for say a reference axis or anything like that. Uh, I can change the opacity of my image as well. And that can help uh, just to throw in some opacity. Um, as we're tracing over, it might be a little bit easier to see our, our sketches if our image is somewhat transparent. And once I'm happy with that, just tap the Done check. And here I have my image thrown in. And then once I have my image imported and positioned the way I'd like, I can really just trace over that image. So here I'll do just a, a real rough sketch. But you can see how you would generally just trace over this using your, your regular sketching tools. So it's going to be a lot of lines, a lot of splines as well for any more complex shapes. And I'm just going to do the, the rough shape here, of course. Not worry about getting it perfect here. And then, of course, we can fine-tune our splines. Let's try to get as close as possible for our, our general shape here. I'll just try to finish off this uh, spline here as well. And I'm not going to worry too much about getting it perfect here, but you can see fairly quickly and easily I can get the, the general shape uh, of what I'm looking for. And you can fine tune this as much as needed in order to get the exact shape you're happy with. In this case, I'll say that this is close enough. And then maybe I want to extrude this general shape here, which is going to be uh, a portion of my hammer's head. So here I have the general profile for my front view. And then I would just repeat these steps for my top view. And again, I just resize and reposition the top view image as I would like, and just the same sketch and trace that out as well. Once I've finished sketching out to that general shape, again, I'm going to extrude my top 
view as well here. So we can see my profile shape of my top view there being extruded as well. And again, I'm not too worried about the total extrude dimensions of either of these in, in one direction or the other because what I'm going to do now is actually create an, an intersection of these two. So what I'd like to do is continue the extrude here. So maybe I'll just hide this image. So again, if I jump into group, just the same as my body's worked, I also have the ability for the sketches and the construction geometry as we saw briefly, but also the images. So here's my two images here. And here I just have the ability to change the opacity of either image. Or I can hide them completely if I'm finished. So in this case, maybe I want to hide my front view. Just so it'll be easier to, say, grab this face here. And I'm going to actually extrude this through. Because now I can use the intersection of these two bodies to create my completed hammerhead shape. So let's take a look at what that would look like here. Just go into Tools, Intersect, and my first body, and intersecting with my second body here. And here we can see now the general shape of that hammerhead design. So this is a very commonly used design technique where essentially we can use hand sketches or images as our blueprints to create some more complex designs.